Vsauce! Kevin here. The Ulfbert was a type of Viking sword made for a short period of time and considered one of the greatest swords ever made. Created from 800 to 1000 AD using high quality crucible steel from Central Asia, they were so much stronger and more flexible than any sword in their time, they were inlaid with the word Ulfbur to set them apart, although no one today knows the meaning behind the name. We do know that the sword was so famous that it was widely copied in its day, and out of 171 found, only a handful are authentic Ulfberts. And there are no other instances of this high quality steel technology in Europe for almost a thousand years. What the fact? The facts and knowledge on legendary swords. Excalibur was the sword of King Arthur and arguably the most famous sword of all time. There are two different accounts of how he became the owner of Excalibur. One popularized version is that Excalibur is also the sword in the stone, and young Arthur was the only one able to pull the sword that was magically held by the stone. And doing this proved that he was the true king of Britain. The other account states that he was given the sword by the Lady of the Lake. After he was mortally wounded in battle, he ordered one of his knights of the round table to return the sword to the lake, where an arm rose and caught it. The Anjo Masamuna is considered one of the greatest Japanese swords ever made, and was created by the man often recognized as Japan's greatest swordsmith, Masamuna. Legend states the blade is so perfectly balanced and aligned that it splits light, rendering its wielder invisible. Unfortunately, the sword went missing in 1946, but Final Fantasy fans will recognize a Masamuna sword carried by Sephiroth in Final Fantasy VII. In 1965, the sword of Gojian was discovered inside a casket with a human skeleton along the Zhang River amongst more than 50 ancient tombs. Even though it had been buried for over two thousand years, the sword remained sharp with very little tarnish. Script on the sword was still legible and read belonging to King Gojian of Yua made for his personal use. The blade was analyzed to understand why it held up so well over the centuries, and it's likely the combination of elements in the sword and the airtight scabbard were responsible for its incredible preservation. A claymore is a Scottish variant of the late medieval two-handed longsword, and it's the same kind of sword believed to have been carried by William Wallace. Wallace was a Scottish knight famous for leading a resistance against the English during the Wars of Scottish Independence, and immortalized in the 1995 film Braveheart. The sword is 5 feet 6 inches, including the hilt, and weighs 6 pounds. Legend states the original scabbard, hilt, and belt were made from the skin of one of the English commanders at the Battle of Stirling Bridge. Rapiers were specifically designed for thrusting and featured complex hilts to protect the hand of the swordsman. The hilts were designed with many variations, including the swept hilt in Italy, the Poppenheimer in Germany, or the Taza Cup hilt style of Spain. And the rapier was made famous in pop culture by the Three Musketeers, the Princess Bride, and video games like the Fire Emblem series. To trap and defend against swords, there were trident daggers. Carried in the swordsman's offhand, it was designed to defend and parry swords, opening up the opponent for a strike. Sword breakers were designed to catch and then eventually break an enemy's sword. I'm gonna leave you with this legendary replica sword made by Tony from Man at Arms. What style is it and what famous historical figure used it? Before we go, here's last video's winner. I want to thank Tony from Man at Arms. This place is amazing. Check out his channel. Make sure that you subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.